A lot of women nowadays is smoking more weed than Wiz Khalifa. You're smoking more weed than Wiz Khalifa and you're sounding like Pop Smoke. The Next Door Podcast. Welcome back to The Next Door Podcast. I am Bestie Next Door and I'm like your bestie next door. If you like your tea to be extra, extra sweet, then this place is not for you. Because we like our tea to be sweet and bitter. Sweet enough that it goes down, bitter enough to wake us up. Now guys, today we're going to get into some things. I got my little ice bucket, my little rose wine. It's already open. I had this for a little while or whatever, but I had to put it in the ice bucket because I enjoy wine that's chilled. So I got my little strawberries in the glass because we are going to be classy and we're going to get into a lot of things on this episode. So without further ado, let's pour it up. It's giving champagne. It's giving popping bottles in the club. <laughs> Hello. Rose wine is one of my favorite kind of wines and strawberry goes really good with rose wine and of course you gotta do a little swerve around the glass i kind of poured myself a big glass but swerve around the glass and for a sip nice and chilled now before we start this episode if you're looking for the high value woman workbook if you're looking for the high value woman audiobook or you're looking to take the high value woman course it's always going to be linked in the description box below if you have any topics or ideas of things you want me to talk about comment in the community section on my youtube channel or if you want to be a virtual guest on the podcast and share your story with others the link is also going to be in the description box below now on today's episode we're talking about presentation i honestly feel like this is something that a lot of people ignore you need to dress for what you want you can't want a valuable man and dress like you want scammers and drug dealers we all judge a book by its cover and i don't care how they say oh well i shouldn't be judged by the way i carry myself you will be judged as a woman by the way you carry yourself you can't be on instagram half naked and then get mad at the men that slide in your dm that want to impress you for one night and throw you back to the streets because you look like you're from the streets i'm just saying hello I want to give you guys a visual picture of what I'm talking about. Now, if you see this type of picture on Instagram, wearing this kind of outfit in public, posting like this on Instagram, you can only imagine the kind of guys that are sliding in her DMs. The kind of guys that are sliding in her DM are thirsties. The guys that want to fly her out, you know, impress her for one night and maybe spend a couple of dollars on her and, and throw her back to the streets because she's dressing like she's from the streets. I want you guys to really understand that you will be addressed by the way you dress. So if you dress like you're for the streets, men are going to treat you like you are for the streets. They're going to bring you in, spend a couple of dollars maybe, or some of them may be lucky with game and throw you back to the streets. And you don't want to be that type of girl. You want to be the girl that's kept. You don't want to be the girl that you bouncing from one guy to the next guy to the next guy to the next guy because guys don't see the value in you. And it's not just about the men. It's about you as a woman as well. Treat your body like a temple. You want to get to a point where you walk into a room and everybody's looking like, who's that? The way you present yourself offline is the same way you need to present yourself online. Because right now we are in a digital era. And a lot of people go by what they see online. The way you are online, people are going to automatically assume that you're like that offline. It all depends on what you want from your life. If you feel like the, what she's wearing is suitable and you would wear something like that, I'm not trying to tell you what she's wearing is wrong and I'm not trying to tell you how to dress, but you need to understand that you need to dress based on what it is you want from life. If you want to date a rapper and scammer, that's okay. Then dressing like that is okay because that's attractive. They like that video vixen look. But just understand that after a while, you're replaceable. Let's use Kim Kardashian as an example and Kanye West as an example. Kanye was first attracted to Kim with her provocative style, her always using her body as a sex symbol. That attracted him to her. But once they got married and after they started having kids, you see the change in her style. He wanted her to cover up more. If you guys get the ebook, The Seven Rules of Dating a Rich Man, that's something you also understand in that ebook. And I recommend you guys to get the ebook. And that ebook is actually linked in my description box below. I am not the writer, but I actually enjoyed that book, which is why I recommend it as well. You know, dressing provocatively, it does attract the man at first, but when a man gets serious with you, he's not gonna want you to dress like that anymore because he's not gonna want other men to look at you the same way he looked at you. Hello.
You need to behave for the lifestyle that you want. That's the reason why your life may not be going the way you want it to go. That's the reason why you probably find it hard to keep a man. That's probably why you find it hard to even gain valuable contacts. You have to look at how are you dressing? How are you presenting yourself to the world? That's really important as a woman. And it's not only important for women too, it's important for men as well. Because for example, if a man is rich and he goes out and he's dressing like he's a bum, he's automatically going to be perceived. So perception is everything. You want a valuable man dressed like a valuable woman. You want a respectable man dressed like a respectable woman. Don't sit there showing your breasts, showing your butt, wearing booty shorts everywhere. The things that I see in the Western society, especially in America, you can go to a grocery store and a girl will walk into a grocery store with booty shorts on. Like, that's inappropriate. You shouldn't be dressing like that. And then that type of girl gets upset that men are hollering at her when she's walking down the street when she doesn't understand that it's the way you're dressed that's making them want to holler at you. You're dressing like a hoochie, so they're going to holler at you like you're a hoochie. But if you dress like a respectable woman, there's no way a man is going to be like, yo, yo, yo. There's no way that you are going to be dressed like a valuable woman and a man is going to come to you and talk to you any given way because he knows that, look, I don't know what's going to come out of her mouth and I don't want to get my feelings hurt today. She looks like a valuable valuable person and a respectable woman so I gotta treat her the way she treats herself so I need to come to her with respect it's unlikely for you to be dressed like a respectable woman and for a man to disrespect you the only way that happens is if you're in the wrong place a respectable women and women of value are not going to be just going to any kind of places and you guys got to understand that you want different things in life you got to change your surroundings change your environment that's how you're going to attract and get the life that you want being a high value woman is not a glitz and glam, like, oh, you know, it's just about being pretty. When you're trying to be a woman of value, you have to understand development, self-development. You have to be always willing to learn. You have to be always willing to change certain things about you to get the results that you're looking for. For example, look at me. I changed my whole background. I'm always willing to learn. I'm always willing to seek more information. That's how you grow as an individual. Life is all about growth. Life is not meant to be a sprint. Life is a marathon. Hello. Packaging is everything. That's something that I learned when I traveled, packaging. When I was in the States, I really didn't understand packaging. Until I left the States for some time is when I started understanding the concept of packaging. You have to know how to package yourself as a woman. The way you talk, the way you walk. You can't talk like one of the boys. Some of you are cursing, 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 cursing in every sentence. And I can't blame you because I used to be the same. But when you're dealing with a real man, a valuable man, you cursing is going to be so unattractive to him. He's going to look at you like, woo. Think about it. Imagine you having a conversation with another woman and every second she's like, yeah, F that. Be this. S that. You're going to look at her like, why are you cursing so much? We're having a regular conversation. And I'm not trying to tell anyone how to talk, but I'm trying to guide you. I'm trying to make sure we grow together. That's why I'm Bessie next door. I'm Bessie next door because I'm your best friend. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm your real best friend. I'm not here to point at you to make you feel bad about what you're currently doing, but I'm here to make you look at your life and look at yourself from a different perspective. Hello. You cursing in every sentence doesn't make you appear as a feminine woman. It makes you appear as a masculine woman. And if you're having a conversation with a guy and you're cursing every second like yo bro yo f this bro you know how people from the north talk you know how us new yorkers talk you guys know what i'm talking about you try to act like you're one of the guys because you want to be relatable to a guy when you act like that and when you are rough with yourself and rough with your words a man is only going to be rough with you because you're showing him how to treat you like for example some girls talk like yeah that that bitch Look at how many bleeps I had to put in that sentence. Now imagine me telling my man like this, like, yeah, babe, I was so upset. Like she pissed me off and I cannot even deal with her anymore. Do you see how feminine I appear talking like that than opposed to saying, yeah, f that bitch, f that bitch. She got me so f tight, yo. Now imagine me having that type of conversation with a man. He's going to look at me like, some men are straightforward enough to tell you, like, why are you cursing so much? While some other men will look at you and be turned off. Expand your vocabulary. The only time you should curse, it should be something that's really, really serious. Like you should be at a level 10 before you even drop an F-bomb. But if you're dropping an F-bomb in every day-to-day -day conversation or when you're talking to a man, you're not going to appear as a valuable feminine woman. And that's the truth. You think about it for yourself. You're having a conversation with your friend and your friend is like, yeah, bro, fuck 
bro. And she's acting all tough. And she's like, yeah, I need to smoke, yo. I need to smoke. And that brings me to another point. A lot of women nowadays is smoking more weed than Wiz Khalifa. You're smoking more weed than Wiz Khalifa and you're sounding like pop smoke. Now, how do you expect a man to treat you like a feminine woman when you're sitting there sounding like pop smoke? Some of you smoking 10 sticks of vapor, crushing your lungs. Your breath is smelling hot. Your breath is smelling like vapes. You're not even chewing gum. You're sitting there like, oh, I need a blunt right now. I need a a vape. Look at how I look and how I sound saying that and think to yourself, do I sound like a feminine woman by saying, yeah, I need to smoke, yo, I need to smoke. Some of you can't even go a day without smoking. You got a serious problem. Now, your problem is deeper than femininity. Now it's like you got a spirit in your body that you need to rebook. This is why I talk about getting the High Value Woman Workbook because the High Value Woman Workbook is going to help you to understand different aspects in your life. And when you understand different aspects of your life is when you're going to be able to change them because you're able to see. I'm a visual learner. And the High Value Woman Workbook is for visual learners, for people who need to see what it is they need to improve in their life. Shoot, I need to pour me another glass. I'll say, oh, you talking about weed smoking, but you always drinking on your episodes. Yes, I drink on my episodes. I am not an alcoholic. I'm going to tell you this right now. If I'm drinking my big body, I literally have one glass. That's it. After that, if I finish the glass, I finish it. If I don't finish the glass, it goes down the drain. It's more classy for a woman to be drinking wine and knowing how to have a conversation with a man than to be smoking weed and say, yeah, I want to smoke you. I want to smoke you. You're on the phone with a man like, yo, you got some weed? Yeah, I'm about to come over there and smoke with you. You look like a man. That's why he's treating you like a man. He's treating you like a homeboy because you're acting like you're one of the homeboys. So he's going to treat you like a man. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to hang out with you, smoke weed with you, put you on your back, not add no value. You're going to feel like, well, I'm smoking for free. And why he's going to go treat another woman, a feminine woman, like a princess because she's treating herself like a princess and she knows how to carry herself like a valuable woman. Hello. Now I'm pouring myself a second glass. I got to top up my glass because I love my wine to be chilled. Like it's so much better that it's sitting on the ice because now it's so chilled. I really wanted to talk about this because fashion is really important. If you are looking to become a woman of value, you need to start with your wardrobe. Anything that looks like it's going to attract scammers, entertainers, and drug dealers, and you know you're not trying to attract them, throw it away. Throw it away. Or give it away. Give it away to somebody. Change your wardrobe. You want better. You you want valuable contact. You want to start having valuable experiences. Your wardrobe matters. How do you carry yourself as a woman? Be honest with yourself. And that's why the High Value Woman Workbook is really going to be beneficial to you because it's going to allow you to be honest with yourself. What are some things that you know you need to change? You have to hold yourself accountable. Us girls, we like to have fun. You know, nowadays girls are wearing skirts that are too short with no panties. How do you expect a man to respect you when you're not even respecting your body? You sitting there twerking in the camera for your friends like, ah, ah, ah. Your booty cheeks is hanging out. You, and you posting it on Instagram. A man can literally drop something and look under and see your whole garden. How do you expect a man to respect you? You know what that man is going to do when he sees that type of woman? He's going to spend whatever, maybe $500, nothing too crazy, take you to a nice place, woo you out, take you to his house or to a hotel, put you on your back, do what he got to do. He's going to try to lay down with you as much as he can, as much as you allow him. And after he's done, he's going to throw you back to the streets because he already sees you're not wifey material. Now, not every girl wants to be a wife and that's okay. It's all about your personal preference. However, why would you want to bounce around from different men to men when you can have one man that treats you good, spends money on you, where you don't have to have different guys doing different things for you? Quality over quantity. It's better to have one man that's spending a bag on you and you're loyal to him and he's treating you good than having six, seven guys that you have to call for this, call for that, call for that. That's why it's really important for you to become a valuable woman. When you are a valuable woman, you only have valuable contacts. You only date valuable men. You have a guy for this, a guy for that. It's mostly like, okay, a guy that is a mechanic. Anytime you have an issue with your car, you can bring your car there. Maybe another guy that is good with taking out business loans. Or another guy that may have connects with flights. That's what you want to have. That's what it means that, oh, you have a guy for this, a guy for that. You don't want to have a guy that, oh, well, this guy, he can only give me $100, but this guy can only give me $200. That's not valuable contacts. They're not valuable. Throw them in the trash. Next caller. Valuable contacts, a guy that you have in different industries that you know that you don't have to lay down with them to get something or for them to do a favor for you. That's valuable contacts because they know that they're going to need you down the line. That's what it is to have valuable male contacts. 
And I know I never elaborated on that, but I wanted to elaborate on that now. That's what that means. So because you are a high value woman and you provide value to them, they're going to provide value to you. All of them are doing things for you, not with the objective of sleeping with you, but they know that you are also a valuable contact as well. Hello. You see why it's important for you to become a high value woman? Because you now, as a high value woman, you provide some type of value in their life. And they know that they're going to need you down the line. They don't mind doing certain things for you without sleeping with you. Just because a woman makes a lot of money and she's popular on Instagram does not make her a high value woman. Some of you are posting pictures for likes. You guys are addicted to likes, then value. Hello. I don't know I'm saying the word. The church needs to say amen. Some of you are addicted to likes more than value. And that's the issue. And then you get mad at the men that talk to you. You get mad that, oh, why am I getting good guys? All the guys I talk to are trash. Because you're dressing and acting like trash. And I'm not saying it to come at anybody. I'm just saying it like, again, I'm your bestie next door. So when you talk to your best friend, your best friend, you and your best friend is real. So I'm being real with you. I want the best for you. That's why I'm telling you these things. You got to also be mindful of your circle. Who do you hang around? If your friends are low vibrational, they're always like, oh, what you doing on Friday? And they have no value to cut them off. You need to understand. You need to have a friend for different occasions. One friend can never be good for everything. Because, for example, if your friend likes scammers and drug dealers and you may not like that and you want a man of value, of course she's going to be more into dressing more provocatively online and going to certain places because she wants to attract those kind of guys. But if you're not looking to attract those kind of guys, you can't be around her all the time because you know what they say, birds of a feather flock together. Hello. It's not that you cut your friends off like in a Hollywood way, but you understand that, you know what, I want different from my life. And I know that me surrounding myself with you is not going to allow me to grow. So you know what? When I'm ready to get a little ratchet, I'm going to hang out with you. But when I'm not trying to get ratchet and I'm trying to be more on my classy, high value stuff, I'm going to hang out with my other friends. And I'm pretty sure that in every group that you have, there's always going to be that one, one or two friends that are looking to be women of value as well. Those are the friends that you want to grab to. You can't Try to go to valuable events and places with a friend that wants to be twerking and drinking Casamigos all the time. Hello. You need a friend that already tastes luxury. So when she goes to certain places, she knows what to order. She's not sitting there looking like, well, I don't know what risotto is. You don't want to go to a five-star restaurant and be with a friend that's saying, yeah, can I have chicken and fries? Absolutely not. You want to be with a friend that says, yes, can I have salmon or can I have risotto or can I have clams or can I have scallop? Can I have prawns? You want a friend like that. You don't want the friend that's going to be like, yeah, can I just get, they got chicken and fries? You don't want that. Keep that friend on one side. One thing you got to understand too, you're not going to always be perfect. I want to be realistic. You're not always going to be a woman of value. Sometimes you want to be, there's going to be times where you're going to want to be ratchet. And the times you want to be ratchet, you know that, yo, I'm going to call my friend because she's going to have me with chicken and chips. She's going to have me with the scammers and drug dealers. I'm going to call, I'm going to hang out with her for some time. But you got to understand, separate your friends. Friends for different occasions. For this next topic, I got to pour up another glass. And this is going to finish up this wine. I got to top up my glass again. Now, woo child. Now, Gabrielle Union. Before we get into that topic, I hope you guys already kind of understand what I'm talking about when it comes to your presentation, how you need to dress. I'm going to share some examples right now of like some styles. This is one example. Another example, and another example. And look at me. Like, you guys see how I come on. You know, I don't come on looking all crazy because I can't be teaching value and be looking like a woman that's not valuable. You get what I'm saying? So I just want you guys to really understand for what you present yourself matters to the world. So you need to, if you need to change your wardrobe completely, change your wardrobe completely. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. You're going to thank me later. Bestie, thank you so much. Like, I got this new person. I'm getting valuable contacts. Not all the guys that are in your phone you need to be sleeping with. Don't feel like you need to sleep with a man to receive something. And that's the mistake a lot of women make. They feel like they need to sleep with a man in order to gain something. But when you are a woman of value and you understand your value, you understand that you can get what you want from a man without sleeping. And it brings us to another point. Some women feel guilty receiving from a man and not sleeping with him. You got to understand that the reason why that man is giving you what he's giving you is because he sees the value in you hello now let's get into this gabrielle union her and doing wig going 50 50 and i really want to talk about this because this is really important 
I want to use Gabrielle Union as an example on how when you are not a healed woman, it lingers on. And this is why I recommend you to get the High Value Woman course. The reason why I'm mentioning the High Value Woman course is because there's different meditations in the course that's going to help you heal that wounded feminine. Now, Gabrielle Union automatically gives me masculine energy. If you notice, all the characters she plays in a movie, they all have strong energy. Gabrielle Union is a product of her environment. And that's why when you are trying to live a different life, a feminine life, you need to heal. I don't just watch my video and be like, yeah, you know, you really need to dive deep and heal. And that's what I had to do too as well. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to give you guys a story before I get into Gabrielle Union. I actually practice what I preach. I'm not the type of person to come on here on my camera and tell you guys a whole bunch of junk and off my camera and do the opposite. I feel like you guys can feel the realness from the camera, how honest and transparent I am. My man started treating me better when I started treating myself better. Yes, in the beginning, yes, he was, you know, taking me out. You know, I was going to clubs with him and things like that. But the moment I really dive deep into my feminine energy is when I noticed the switch. He always asked me, do you need money? Do you need this? Do you need that? When you are a feminine woman and you're dealing with a masculine man, in the beginning, you may have to ask. But after a while, he's going to start asking you, what do you need, babe? Are you okay, babe? What do you need? You sound like you're a little stressed out. Should I give you some money? That's why it's important for you to become a feminine woman. I was not always feminine. Listen, I have two older brothers. I'm the only female. So you could just imagine how I was growing up. But at the same time, I understand how men operate from a different level. Why? Because I was living with two men and I seen how they operate with their girlfriends and I see how they think. So when I say what I'm saying to you guys, I'm not saying it from a blank air. I'm saying it from experience and from what I've seen. Now let's dive back into the Gabrielle Union situation and her going 50-50 with Dwayne Wade. I watched the interview because, you know, a lot of people online don't really like to watch full videos. They like to just take a clip and be like, oh my God, oh my God. But when you watch the full interview, you'll see why she's masculine. You'll start to see how she was trained to be a masculine woman. Me, when I watch things, I don't watch things based on what the public says. I always watch things from a different point of view. I always try to really understand and put myself in the other person's shoes. I did a little bit of research. I found out that Gabrielle Union was previously married to an NFL player. His name is Chris Howard. They were married for four years. And the reason why the marriage did not work out was because of infidelity. They both were cheating on each other. And I can kind of see that. When you look at Gabrielle Union, you can kind of see that masculine energy in her face and her eyes. And her being in her masculine energy really stemmed from childhood. She always felt like she wasn't enough. That was the issue. And we look at the chart of feminine energy versus masculine energy. One of the traits in the masculine side being competitive. Every woman that you see that's competitive, you see that she has a masculine energy to her. So with her feeling like she's not enough, maybe because she's insecure about the way she looked younger, you know, she mentioned that when she decided to get into acting and modeling, her parents told her that, all right, well, since you want to do that, then support yourself. So imagine being a teenager or being however old she was at the time and your family is not really financially supporting you. And now you feel like you have to compete with the other women in your industry. It's only going to make her be masculine. It's not like she's seen a dynamic in her household where, you know, her mother was feminine and her father was masculine. Then it would have been a little bit more different for her. But both of her parents were hard workers. So with her seeing that, she already adapted being a hard worker as well. Sometimes as women, a lot of our issues stem from our childhood. And when we don't fix those childhood issues, it's when it develops more in our adulthood. And that's what's happening with Gabrielle Union. Going 50-50 with the man can never work because you're never going 50-50. You're doing more than the man. Because why? We women are natural nurturers so especially if a kid is involved you're spending more time with the kid you're making sure your husband is okay you're making sure the kid is okay so how can that ever be 50 50 that's really 60 40 so now you're giving the man less load while you're taking on more load and you're becoming more masculine now that she said that there's women that are in her same predicament that are making a lot of money and now they're like okay well it's okay now we got these dusties in the comments like oh yeah you see i need a woman like gabrielle union that's gonna bring something to the table and go half with me sir you don't even have a pot to piss in 
You don't even have a house for a table. Next caller. You can't even apply to this type of conversation. Hello. Every union talking about going 50-50 is going to start making women feel like it's okay. And it goes back to the point of them pushing a masculine agenda on women and demasculating the men. A man should never be okay with his woman going 50-50 with him. Yes, she can provide certain things for herself. Yes, I'm never going to sit there and say you're supposed to not do nothing. That's so unrealistic. Of course, you want to have your own money because you never know what's going to happen. But a man is supposed to provide. That's what makes him a man. His ability to provide. But once you take that from a man, it's like you're demasculating him. And now you're becoming the man. Because now you're not only taking on 50-50, you're also taking the 10% from him because you're taking care of the kid. You're making sure he's okay. He's emotionally okay. He's fed. You're taking care of the house. You're making sure the maids are doing what they're supposed to do if you have maids. Absolutely not. That's why 50-50 don't exist when it comes to men and women. Really, she's not going 50-50. This is why probably Dwayne Wade is wearing skirts. You're going to be wearing the pants. He's going to be wearing the skirt. Because why? You want to go half and half on the bills, but you're not even going half. You're doing more. So now he's going to be like, you know what? You can go half on the bills and do more. And I'm going to sit back and, you know, do my 30. And I'm going to wear skirts. And while I'm wearing skirts, I'm probably going to go deal with some hookers that are a little bit more feminine than you. Because most of the time, a guy that you are going 50-50 with, when you're going 50-50 with the guy, when he cheats on you, he never cheats on you with the woman that is doing 50-50. He's always going to be the one that's providing for that woman. He's always going to cheat on you with the woman that doesn't have to do 50-50. You want to make your man continue being a man? Let him pay all the bills. He doesn't have enough money. He can go and make more money. Hello. And guys, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope this episode was refreshing and made you think differently about different aspects of your life. If you're listening on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to, thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. And like, comment, subscribe. It really helps my channel. And turn on the notification bell to be notified when I upload more episodes. Guys, I have a set schedule. I am going to be uploading two times a week. That's what I can do, and that's what I can commit to. So my schedule is going to be Wednesdays and Sundays. So Wednesday and Sunday is our day. You know that, all right, Bessie's coming with a new episode Wednesday and Sunday. And if I don't, come in my comment section and attack me. (laughs) Anyways, but guys, you know the rest. Until we meet again.